Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Carol. This is Michael, the founder of the 7-Step System to Pass the 12th YBT. And right now I'm going to listen to your post-test. And you're going over, uh, it looks like you're reading three paragraphs, answering three specific questions. And based on that, I'm going to try to give you some suggestions as to how you're doing. And if there's any problems I might see in there, I'll let you know as we go. Okay, here we go. Reading passage one. Read the following passage aloud. When two people are talking to each other, they tend to stand a specific distance apart. Okay, so good so far. So be careful about your pause, and you're probably speaking a little bit too slowly. Each person has an immediate... Invisible boundary around his his or her body into which one per people may not come. Now I think on that one, if you look back at it, you're struggling a little bit of how to do that. So each person has an in, invisible boundary around his or her body, pause, into which other people may not come. That's how I would read that. If someone pierces this boundary, she or he will feel uncomfortable and move away to increase the distance between them. The major exception is family members and other loved ones. This personal distance is not due to body odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a sense of intimate intimacy that is at all with the relationship to the other individual. Okay, so I think your pronunciation is actually fairly clear, but you're probably just not speaking fluent enough, and part of it's blending, and I'll talk to you a little bit about this later on. If you blend and connect certain words together, it'll make it easier for you, and you'll be more natural sounding when you speak. Reading passage 2. Read the following passage aloud. Interestingly, interestingly, the average personal distance varies from culture to culture. Okay, let's look at that one word you're having trouble with there. It varies, not varies, but the average personal distance varies from culture to culture. So that word you're having some trouble with. Americans tend to require more personal space than in other cultures. Therefore, if you try to get too close to an American during your conversation, he or she will feel that you are in his face and will try to back away. Try to be aware of this. So, if the person to whom you are speaking backs away a little... So it would be backs away, not backs away but backs away a little that's kind of my point with blending is when you have a verb and you have a preposition after that you want to take the final sound of the one word and blend that to the first sound of the next word don't try to close the gap reading passage three read the following passage aloud also try to avoid physical contact while you want to say there contact not contact but contact usually if you if you take a word like conduct conduct the, when the stress is on the first syllable it's more a noun when the stress is on the second syllable it's changing it to a verb so contact is a noun I want to I want to contact another individual I think it actually stays the same there with that particular word you are speaking things, this may also lead to discomfort. Touching is a bit too intimate for casual ac uh, acquaintances. So, so you want to take the word cas casual, casual. That's uh, what, what we call a palatal consonant. Casual, casual. Oh, don't put your arm around his or her shoulder. Don't touch his or her face or hold his or her hand. Shaking hands when you initially meet 
or part is acceptable. But this is only momentary. Okay, part B. Respond to the following inter、uh, interview questions. Don't write. Now, based on your response to these three, three questions, I'm I'm going to give you what's called an intelligibility score. Now, the score you're looking for is about 5.1 or higher. If you can score higher than 5.1 out of seven, that means that you have very strong speaking and pronunciation proficiency of American English. And outline or practice your answer. Speak as naturally as you can. Uh, question one: Who is your best friend? Why is the person important to you? Use supporting examples. Ah,、uh, my best friend definitely is my mother. Be ah,、uh, yeah, she is the more ah、uh, most important person to me. First, she's my mother. Okay, so you're doing a lot of repetition here. You want to try to create a topic statement. My mother is the most important person to me because. State one or two points, then go on and develop those points. Then move on to the next question. I think every every everybody's mother is the important person to everyone. Ah,、uh, second, secondly. My mother is my best friend because every time,、uh, no matter I was excited, I was happy, or I was. I'd say no matter if, maybe, no matter if I was excited or. Then, she always talk a lot to me. So be careful about these pauses. You're having a lot of pauses and hesitations. This hurts your pacing. This does cause problems with your pronunciation if your pauses are too long. It's it's demonstrating if you're pausing too long, it's showing that you're limited. Your vocabulary and your grammar is limited, and you're having to stop and then think in the brain what you want to say before you say it. Make me calm down. And tell me to don't never give up. For example, when I got failed、uh, in my working or studying, yeah, she always tell me, yeah, never give up. Okay, you you've already said that, so you want to be careful that you're not too repetitious. As you're answering this first question, you have the tendency to repeat, to say things, you know, over and over without giving any basic details to support those points. You will be better and better. I think you want to say there, I will be better and better, not you will be better and better. And I, after that. I I I I will I will finish my my work my studying and reach my goal. So any time I have problem, I will go to talk with mom and let her give me some suggestion and give me her opinion. That's why. I think my mother is my best friend and is the important person to me. Okay, question two: Where do you see yourself five years from now? What will you be doing? Be sure to explain your idea with supporting details. I think I will see myself. After five years, still in house, in my house, I still will be a housewife. So you're having a little bit of trouble expressing that idea. You might say something like this: Five years from now, I see myself still as a housewife, staying at home, something like that. Because right now, I just got my newborn son. 
He is the important thing to me. So first, I need to raise him up and uh, educate him, give him everything, my everything. That was a little awkward. Everything, my everything. You might say, "He is my everything." You know, you could say something like that. You're just saying that your newborn is very, very important to you. I support him and teach him. And right now, I think my English is not in,、uh, not good enough, so I always talk to him in Chinese. Uh, I want him to to be a person who can speak to many kind of language. So basically, I think he he will he will speak Chinese and English and Spanish. Now, think about the question here. Your question that you're being asked is, where do you see yourself five years from now? So then you said you will see yourself uh, being uh, as a housewife, right? Doing various things around the household. You're kind of changing the purpose of the speaking task. You're getting now into why your newborn is important to you, but that's not essentially what the question is. So you want to make sure you can organize your responses. Around what the question is. This is very important when you're doing academic speaking or academic writing. It's important to directly address the task. My husband is a Spanish, so I think I will keep this situation. And so instead of saying keep this situation, you might say so. Five years from now, I will still be at home. Uh, being housewife, something like that. Till he go to school. I'd say there until he goes. S. Don't forget your grammatical word endings there. Until he goes to school. Okay. Question three. What is your favorite season of the year? Fall, winter, spring, or summer? My favorite season should be summer. Ah,、uh, because I wouldn't say my favorite season should be summer. If you say it should be summer, it means it's not. You say my favorite season should be summer, but actually, I prefer the winter time. So if you have a contradiction, you might say should be. But I think you probably want to say my favorite season of the year is summer, and then because I love swimming, and I love ocean. I grew up. I would say I love swimming and I love the ocean. The ocean.、Uh, in the city. Near the near the ocean. Um. Every summer, I spend my most of my time in the ocean. I always think I'm just a big fish. <laughs> And in summer, I can swim. Freely in the ocean, up and down and deep. But in winter, it's too cold. I can't swim a lot. I can only swim in the swimming pool. A、uh, too small、uh, compared the ocean. So I might say, I can only swim in the swimming pool, which is too small compared to. The size of the ocean, right? So, you need a little bit more advanced grammar to help connect your different ideas together. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. So you're done with that. Now let's take a look at how you will score and why.
Okay, let me get the intelligibility uh, rubrics up here so we can talk about those just a little bit. And I'll put the, the link in the YouTube video too where you can take a look at it yourself. Okay, so during the speech, I think uh, you're having some, you're still having some continuing problems with your pronunciation. Uh, your grammar, I think, is a little bit basic. Your vocabulary is pretty basic. And both of those limitations are preventing you from fully expressing your ideas. Uh, you also have some pronunciation problems, and it's making it a little bit difficult to understand what you're saying. So because of this, I'm going to put you in the intermediate level. I'm going to put you at about 3.3 out of 7, which is intermediate level in your speaking abilities. Remember, if you want to take the TOEFL test, you want to try to move two levels from where you are. Now, it's important to find as many opportunities as you can, Carol, to speak English with native speakers. Watching TV, listening to the radio, these things are very, very important. Even reading magazines, reading newspapers, and reading longer books are also helpful because it's getting you used to the grammar and the vocabulary of the English language. Okay, so let's take a look at my pronunciation part of the course. I'm going to make some suggestions. And basically what I'm doing now is I've given you a score and I'm also going to give you some specific lessons that you can maybe take a look at for review to help you continue moving in the right direction. Uh, I would suggest uh, take a look at speaking lesson number 16 which goes over the J measure. Now in the second part of my course lessons 26 through 28 syllable division and grammatical word ending. Sometimes you're not pronouncing the S ending at the end of a word, so that's important for you. Also word stress. You're definitely having word stress issues with your pronunciation, so I would suggest that you review my Speak Clearly lesson number 28 through number 32. Uh, also, take a look at my lessons about thought groups and blending, and that's lessons 41 through 44. So studying those lessons will continue to help you improve your pronunciation and reduce your non-native speaker accent so that you speak more clearly. All right, anyway, thank you for doing the post-test for the pronunciation part of my course, and keep up the good work.